Okay. So I got two triangles here. They're congruent triangles. And we've got this point on one of them. And we're trying to figure out where is this point on the other triangle. So if I were to pick this triangle up, and it looks like I might have to do some like moving it around a little bit. If I were to move it around and place it directly on top of this triangle, where would this point end up? And if you look carefully at what this, um, if I do the, uh, the, um, calculate the side lengths to double check, but, uh, this side here, see how it goes over two, up one, over two, up one. Well, look here, one, two, one, two, looks like this side ends up matching up with this side. If I did the length of this side here, it's square root of 50, and so is the length of this side, that's square root of 50. And here, this one's over three, up one, over three, up one, over three, up one. If you look here, three, one, three, one, three, one. So it looks like this side here matches with that side. So this is kind of a rotation of some sort. This triangle B would rotate down to Q, C down to R, and A down to P. So this point is going to end up down on this side down here, but where on that side? We want to find exact coordinates. So oh, if we look here, you'll notice that this isn't too hard to find. Notice how it goes over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one. So if we're just over one, up one once, that's one-fifth of the way there. So we need to find a point that is one-fifth of the way from R to P. Well, we've done this before. All we have to do is find the vector from R to P, then uh, find a vector that's one-fifth as long as that, as that and add it to R. So let's see here. The vector from R to P. So R, P, there's a simple table here. We've got 3, negative 5, negative 4, negative 4, and minus start equals change. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7, and negative 4 um, uh, minus negative 5 is positive 1. Okay. So this vector here, negative 7, 1, will take us from R to P, meaning we go back 7 spaces and up 1, which I guess we could just count spaces and get that anyway. Now we want, want to find out what 1 fifth of that is. So 1 fifth of negative 7, 1, and this is actually pretty easy, because 1 fifth times negative 7 is negative 7 fifths, and 1 times 1 fifth is 1 fifth. Now we just have to add that vector to point R. So we'll start with, uh, we'll start with, uh, let's see here, 3, negative 5, and we're going to add 7 fifths, uh, 1 fifth, let's see what we end up with here, let's see, 3, <clears throat> so plus a negative 7 fifths is really like minus 7 fifths, so 3 minus 7 fifths, is one and three fifth. I'm going to leave that as a as a mixed number because it's going to be easier to find it on the grid. And then uh, negative five plus one fifth is well, that's um negative four and uh, four fifths. Okay. So this is our our point. Let's call it. Um, we'll call this point up here the original. F, so we're going to call this point G. I guess we could call it F prime, but whatever. So let's see, 1 and 3 fifths, so 1 and 3 fifths, which is going to be somewhere around here on the x-axis, down 4 and 4 fifths, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and almost 5, so somewhere right around here. 1 and 3 fifths, negative 4 and 4 fifths. Right, so that's one-fifth of the way from R to P. So again, the way to find this is, we, and we could have, we may have, if this weren't so easy to find, right, if we if weren't so recognizable that this is one-fifth of the way from C to A, we might have to go through some hoop jumping to figure out what fraction of the way that is, but um, we didn't have to. So then we go, well, it's one-fifth of the way there, so it's got to be one-fifth of the way from R to P. So describe the entire trip from R to P using a vector. And then find one fifth of that vector, and then add one that one fifth vector to point R to see what is the journey um, one fifth of the way there. Not too bad.